Hello and welcome to Right On, the podcast from Final Draft. This is the show where we talk about all things screenwriting. I'm your host, Phil Galasso. Today on the pod, we have an interview with Black Widow writer Eric Pearson. In this first solo outing for the Marvel character outside the Avengers movies, we follow Natasha as she confronts her mysterious past. Natasha, my sister, after all this time, what brings you home? I'm on the run. I was trying to do something good. Any more than just a trained killer. You're fooling yourself. We are still both trained killers. We have unfinished business. This is we. Still fits, hmm? Family. Back together again. You got fat. It's many water wind. There's a new world of widows. New enemies. I'm done running from my past. that guy. Guest host Sade Sellers and Eric talked about what it's like writing for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, staying true to your characters, his note-taking process, and more. Check it out. Welcome back to Write On Podcast. I am Sade Sellers and I'm here with Eric Pearson, the screenwriter of Black Widow. Hi, Eric. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. We are one week today as we're recording this after the release of Black Widow. And I just want to get your first impressions about all the feedback. You've been trending on Twitter almost every day since the movie came out. Do you watch or read any of those reactions? I, I dip my toe in here and there. I, I mean, I, I obviously followed, you know, how well it did. I'm, I'm thrilled with how well it did that so many people went to go see it in theaters. I love that. I love, I, I've seen it two times in theaters now. And as great of a thing as Disney Plus is, I really, there's something about seeing it with a lot of people. And, you know, maybe maybe people are, are having their own big screening parties at home, but I, I think something about sitting in the dark in the theaters and feeling that moment when everyone gets sad or when everybody laughs, the, the communal experience is the way for me. But I, I have seen a few things. The last thing that I saw was someone who wrote the entirety, every line from the movie out in tiny handwriting into a piece of art that was really cool. And I was just like, fans are great. It's really, I'm so pleased that someone would like it enough to do that. And that's something that I would look at more. And when people are displeased, I kind of like, well, I'm wish, I wish you could have liked it. You know, I, I'm one of those people that actually watched it on Disney Plus because I'm in the island of Kauai and we're filming a horror film down here. And I went on Friday to find a local theater to watch it. And they said, well, all our theaters closed during COVID, which is really sad. So I got to go into my room and turn and turn on my Disney Plus and watch, and it was still really, really great on my iPad. Honestly, <laughs> I'm happy you have a way to see it. That's that that I mean, because obviously, what we'd like most is to not be in a pandemic and for us to get out of that. So I'm really glad that people like you who who couldn't see it in the theater have still have an opportunity to see it and and get to enjoy it for yourself before the whole internet spoils everything that happens in it for you. Oh, it's never been harder to avoid a spoiler than it is now, especially when I'm Twitter. And I want to ask you about a screenwriter. Your whole life depends on in the MCU not spoiling anything. How do you deal with writing Black Widow uh, without really having anyone to talk to out in your family or in your close friend circles because you have, you know, to keep things so quiet? Do they ask you questions that you're like, ooh, I'm not going to, I can't tell you that. Yeah, no, it's just, it. I don't know how I, I deal with it. I just, you just do. It's stressful. It sucks. Like, cause I, I'm also, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a talker. I, I would prefer to tell everyone everything and say, oh, I got to do this cool thing or, or this, oh, this choice I made. I hope it really works out. You can't do any of that. Fortunately, there's, you know, these 
these movies are a big collaborative thing. So I could always chat with Brian Chapek, my producer, or Kiana Fazelli, his his uh, junior executive, or you know, even text with Florence or Scarlett or OT or anybody, just kind of just to, you know, but mostly, yeah, you just bear, you just carry it on your back and feel terrible and you feel nervous. I, at least I do. I always feel nervous that I, I have this secret that people are trying to get, get from me. Okay. So this is a, I'm a planner in my head and I'm thinking about your process of drafting this juggernaut of a film. And I need to know where do we start in this? Because we've 10 plus years of MCU history and threads. And now we have 10 plus years more leading ahead of us. So when you sit down to go, okay, we need to write this Black Widow film. What's the first step in the writing process? Well, the first step for me, because I came on late, there there had been two writers who had worked on it before me. And Kate had already been hired. And obviously Scarlett was on not only as Natasha Romanoff, but also as an executive producer. So Scarlett and Kate and Kevin and Brian had all been talking for a while so there were some things that were already kind of decided on. There, there was they, they knew that they wanted to do a family aspect. They had the idea of this prologue and then a bit of a getting the band back together style of, of narrative. The, the hardest part, I would say, is it, I came in and I, I had some of these puzzle pieces, but nobody knew what the puzzle looked like. But I knew I needed to use certain puzzle pieces. I knew I, knew I needed to use uh, Belena Belova, the Red Guardian. I knew... Uh, Taskmaster would be involved. We, we knew that we had to go to Budapest and kind of shed light on that that big uh, uh, Marvel secret that's been there since the first Avengers film. Then, and then we also, you know, there were restrictions because we were working with the time period between Captain America Civil War and Avengers Infinity War, short period. And yeah, that 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 was the the trickiest thing was to make this a personal movie about Natasha, which was very important to Scarlett and Kate make it an investigation of her as a character and her heart and and what made her who she is. But also think of a villain plot that could be a real threat, despite the fact that I guess the way the trickiest thing is the way the way it had to be done is this villain could succeed in this movie and still be a had to be a threat, but in success would stay hidden. You know, that that was the trickiest thing to and figure out a villain threat that could succeed without, you know, making an, a, a huge impact or an obvious impact on the universe. If he said he was going to blow up the moon, you knew he didn't succeed because there's still a moon in uh, right. Avengers Infinity War. I really have a question about what it is like coming as a writer late to a project that already has or had two writers before you in so many pieces. What's the conversation like when you're hired on to say, hey, we have these things that hasn't worked out twice and now we really need you to fix it. Do you come in and reassure them that you can do the job or do you come in just working with everyone? Like what is your position when the, the project's already set up and you're coming in with this fresh pair of eyes? Well, I've had to do that a couple of times now and you never look at the whole, you try to never look at the whole fish at all at once, you know, because then it's just too intimidating. People have been working on it. Departments have been hired. People are are sketching sets and stuff like that. And everything seems like it's, it's, it's very you know, heightened and, and high stakes. And you just kind of have to go in and give your honest opinion. You're, you're the custodian of, of the script. You're the, you're the one in charge of that document. And you're the one who has to make sure that we're being true to our characters and our story and that everything kind of makes linear sense and that what our characters are doing makes sense to their characters. So you just kind of, I try and come in with a bit of a calming presence. I don't, I know I don't always succeed. Sometimes I freak out too, but you really, yeah, you just kind of look, have to look at the material and say, oh man, I love this stuff. Uh, This stuff maybe doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Okay. With everything that we have, what I would love to see, you know, from, from a Natasha Romanoff story, because we, we approached it with the lens of this is a Natasha Romanoff story. I want to see what it's really like inside the most mysterious Avenger, the Avenger that intentionally closes herself off from people socially and emotionally. You know, what's the best way to bring that out of her? The, the part of her, the part of her emotion and her heart that she can't really control the way she controls everything else. Oh, it's probably this family that had a great effect on her that she tried to erase from her memory when she reset her life. And that fortunately we had a lot of canon where that was already established in previous movies. I I, I could look back and say, 
well, I know Natasha Romanoff defected from a place called the Red Room and became an Avenger. And, and from that point on, was a very specific kind of person in the way that she interacted with people. Everything before that was kind of fair game. And so then we had a great character and an actor, the perfect actor to do that in, in Yelena Belova and Florence Pugh, to be someone who on the Marvel side can be as dangerous physically as Natasha, but is in a place in her life where Natasha has done everything to bury her emotions. Yelena is just kind of been free as almost like a volcano of emotions and is just the perfect person to put Natasha Romanoff off balance and force her to show a side of her that we've never seen before. And Yelena is uh, quickly a fan favorite and of a stole, and you know, not stole the movie, but she is a highlight of the film for me. Every scene she's in is just so fun and, and so heartbreaking because she's, you know, Florence has that perfect balance of sadness and humor. Uh, the credit to her and the writing. I do want to also ask. Oh, no, I was just going to say that she, she oh, go is ahead. a real, a hell of a talent. And, and it's, ama- it's amazing the full range of, of things that she was able to bring the movie in both, but, or not both, but from, from physicality and fighting, her opening, her introduction scene is so violent and great. And, and, and you just are like, oh, God, this person is very dangerous to her comedy stuff, which was so great. And then her, I mean, she really, she really breaks our heart at the, at the dinner table. So I was just agreeing with you with more words. No, is that I'm an older sister and I I love this film because I really related to Natasha in the sense that I feel like as the older sisters, we we do bury our feelings. We, we're almost like the second mom. We have to take care of the siblings. And my sister always got to be the wild and free one. So that scene was so heartbreaking. Did you call your sister I, after the movie? Did you call your sister and talk to her? And, and You know what's funny? My sister rented the movie and I split it with her. So oh, yeah. we could watch it together on Disney Plus. See, so it's and she. We live in two different cities, so we haven't been able to see a movie together since I don't know. We were teenagers almost. Oh, so yeah. this was a good bonding time for us as sisters oh, to watch. Yeah. So there is a, a upside to the whole, you know, watching it on the app thing. You actually get to, I get to watch it with my sister and she literally, we both laughed at that opening scene when they're playing with each other because that, that was us. We grew up in Michigan. That, that was just our relationship. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's, I mean, and, and if you can identify with that too, it's your hooks, hopefully as an audience member, I, I would hope, yeah, you want to be able to, to let the audience see themselves a little bit, uh, and then, you know, once things start going wrong, they, you, they can't detach themselves from it anymore because they're already, they've already, it's part of them is in the character. Yes. I want to, I want to briefly circle back. Cause I want to know, did you, do you reach out to the other writers who've had passes to go? Hey, I saw Jack. I saw Jack. Cause at that point, Jack was already moving on to WandaVision. And I also knew at that point what WandaVision was about. And I was a huge Nick at Night kid growing up. So I'd watch a lot of the old shows. So I was, if anything, I probably wasted too much of her time asking her what was going on with her thing. And I was, I was so excited about it, but yeah, so I I was able to speak to her about it and kind of get her impression. And and she was always very supportive and, and, you know, we, we really, we put our heart into these things in a way that you, you never really expect. Even I've done a couple weeks on movies here and there just as like a, a, a patch up job on things where I'm never credited. And it's not, it's, that's not the point of it. I'm just there to kind of fix something. But once you start writing people saying things and, and, and you get a favorite joke in there, or, or even just a little thing, you really invent, I think a good writer invests more than they ever want to. So uh, she was very supportive and, and was, was, you know, emotionally invested and wanted us to succeed. So that was very kind of her. She's been on the show. She was such a pleasure. We've, and now she has like 65 Emmy nominations too. Yeah, I know. Good for her. I'm glad so, I got to talk to her before she, now she's unattainable. It's not going to happen ever again. <laughs> I'm sure that she would talk to you again. She's, she's, uh, I, I, let's wish her luck and, you know, go Marvel at the Emmys. I, yes, I, I'm hoping they sweep. I'm ready. I, I have a question about these action sequences because my jaw was dropped, especially at that that third act action sequence. I'm not going to spoil it for people in case they haven't seen it. Wow, though, that's a lot. Can you tell me what your hand is, was in preparing for that final battle sequence? Was it already there when you got there? Did it need refining? Where was it when you approached it? 
we knew that we were going to be kind of in the red room at the end. And the idea had been floated already, neat, pun unavoidable, that there, there would be this, this fortress in the sky. Uh, because there is a panel uh, and a se- there's a specifically a panel and a sequence from a, a Black Widow comic where she smashes through a window and you're and she's falling in a free fall in the middle of the sky and we we liked that for me that was the whole third act was like it just scrambled my brain because it was that that was the that was by far the most difficult thing to do just from a logistics point because at that point we had a certain number of heroes that were in, in three different places with a certain, you know, a, we kind of had a brain villain and a, and then like a group of brawn villains and then another kind of special brawn villain and everyone had different tasks. And also not everyone knew what was going on at every moment. So keeping track of that was, was very, very difficult. And there were, there was more than once where we, we got to a point where, I, and, and that's, I think, where your your that's really your job as the as the writer and on the big studio movie because so many people are doing so many different things, building huge sets, stunts, wires, VFX, everything. It's your job to say, okay, uh, wait, stop everything. That person couldn't say that here because they don't know that piece of information yet. Like that that was the, so that was the hardest thing, just keeping track of everything. I had multiple kind of little lists on the side of like, okay. At this point, Natasha knows this. And at this point, Yelena or Alexia or Melina knows this. So I, I got to wait till here until I can do this plot point because otherwise they wouldn't know that that's their objective. So that was, yeah, that that was, well, a, that was a real headache. Well, I want to know as a planner, are you note carding? How is your mind map working to keep order as you're drafting? Just uh, frantically, I guess, <laughs> because this one, uh, I, I mean, I think with this one, especially... <laughs> we were like in production at this point. So it was just kind of on, you know, I I had an idea that made sense to me, but then maybe an actor has a note or something like that. And and a pin gets pulled and you've got to readjust. So, and then, you know, uh, in, in reshoots, we had to do a little bit, of connective tissue here and there you just kind of i don't know you just have, i have i've always had a good memory for knowing what's going on in my stories uh, in the in the scripts i i believe that on this one there was a point where someone said something about a sequence and the script at that point was probably 130 135 pages they said something about a specific thing i said and they're like yeah it's 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 this thing i was like i um that's probably seven page 77 and i it was a guess but i was right like I knew exactly where this random thing that they mentioned. Was. So I've always had a good mind of keeping track of what is going on. This was the first, this third act was the first one to really strain, really strain me and make it very, very difficult where I had to just, I did it as lists. I know a lot of people do no cards or whiteboards, but for me, it was just lists in the margins of, I, I like working with paper too. Something about being able to flip to paper makes me feel better, feel more in kind of control of it. So that's, you know, I'll just have notes in the margin all the time. I'm like you, I like a good paper. One question I want to ask before I get to our final question. And because I'm listening to you and I'm just amazed because you're telling me they're building sets and they're in production. So when did you actually rap as the writer? What point of production were you actually like, okay, we're we're done here? Never. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, never re- no well i mean because i was there we did additional photography in in january of 2019 i was there for i wrote all those pages and I, and I was there for that and then there was probably an adr session one or two of those in the office but then things started closing down for the pandemic we were rushing to get this thing finished to get everything locked for may 1st of 2020 mm-hmm. but then as things started getting shut down in march and people couldn't go into work and everyone was being pushed back everyone realized that the world was changing so i would say into you know everything was pushed back a little bit and i'd say even into like June of uh, maybe May or June of last year, there was one or two things of like, hey, we got a little space here. We could do an ADR session with uh, Scarlett or Rachel, just have a a line to kind of clarify what's going on uh, on the back of their head. Just, you know, on the level of like, get to the base kind of thing. Nothing, nothing major character wise, but all the way to the end, I, I was doing, they call it plussing at Marvel. They're always plussing. If you can plus on the day, 
people are plussing until the movie is completely locked. If you can do something that makes it a little bit, a little bit better, then, you know, it's, it is your duty to plus. Amazing. And um, with that said, I want to know with all of this intel that you just gave me, what advice would you give your younger writer self? Across the board of anything? Could be what? anything. Yeah. Well, there's different stages. If I was just getting out there, I would say, I'd say, find your people right away. Find, find the people who want to work as hard as you do and like kind of the same stuff that you do, because that's kind of the most free time uh, that you have is before when you're young and before anyone cares about you, you're going to be writing your own stuff that only you think is good and your friends think are good and what you want to see. And you might be making your own short movies or sizzle reels or something. So just like, don't, some people will say like, oh, get out here and, and a friend and, a, and an agent's assistant or try and get in and smooth this party. I'm like, no, find the people who are making cool stuff that you want to make and you guys become a support system for each other so you can all you know do cool stuff the best the best possible thing that could happen to you as a writer a filmmaker a director anybody is is for you to make something on your own and hollywood to say i want that <laughs> for them to come to you and 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 say you're successful on your own. If you try and just fit into what everyone else is doing, you're you're going to be derivative regardless. So I would say find, you know, find your own thing. And when you're taking a studio job, remember that there's a difference between, you know, writing for the studio movie and writing your own personal indie about your life that 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 matters. Like I I didn't create Natasha Romanoff. I did not create Thor Odinson. I think it's important for me to say that, you know, especially I'm working I I Taika was already working on Thor Ragnarok. We were doing his version of Thor. So I was there to help him do that. And if I thought something was going wrong, I would very clearly say I disagree. But if Kevin or Taika said the other way, I'd say, okay, it's it, this is your way. Same, Same with Kate or Garrett or Kevin on, on Black Widow. I, you know, it's important that you express your opinion, but ultimately with a big studio movie like this, you're kind of leasing the characters and you're just, you got to work hard, but you know, they're, they're adopted children. That's not the appropriate metaphor, um, <laughs> you know, but you know what I'm trying to say. It's you, know, you know what I'm trying to say. No. That, yeah. Anyway. I think that's a good advice for all stages. It's collaborative, no egos. You're here to do a job and make the story the best it can be. So. And have fun. Like, ideally, if you're, if you're, if this is pulling teeth for you, it might not be the best job because like, it's still a really fun job. And not saying it's not hard at times, but like you should remember that like, it's very fun if you get to tell stories for a living. It is. Yeah. And I'm a testament of that because I enjoyed the hell out of this film. Oh, I'm so happy. And I want to thank you today for being here. <laughs> I'm going to watch it a thousand times because I, I paid $30 for it. So now I can watch it a thousand times it. anytime yeah. I want. That, that is your right. Um, thank you so, so much for taking the time to speak to me today, even with me being in the weeds. three hours behind you and, and internet I'm in the weeds, literally. That's how I feel. Right I, I should now. say for the, um, uh, Black for the Widow, audio, she is literally in the weeds. The background of her Zoom is in the weeds for for the audio content side of this. And if you've ever been in pre-production, you know exactly how I feel right now. I do. I do. <laughs> so, well, everyone, thank you so much for having Black me. Widow is up in theater. Yes, thank you so much. I'm gonna plug. I'm gonna plug your movie. Okay. So <laughs> give me. Go ahead. Don't let me stop. Here you. we go. Black Widow is now in theaters and available on Disney Plus for premium access. It is great. It is touching. It's poignant. It's a perfect send off for Natasha. Please watch it. Eric, can't wait to have you back. Much continued success to you. I'm a huge fan of your work. We didn't even get to talk about Ragnarok because we would be here forever. But I can't wait to talk again. And I hope you have a really great day. Thanks so much. I can't wait to come back and hopefully it'll be soon. Thanks to Eric Pearson for coming on the show. And as always, thanks to Sade Sellers for killing it as host. Black Widow is in theaters right now. And as always, thanks to you, our listeners. If you like this episode, leave us a review. And if you haven't already, subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. For news about future episodes and more, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Final Draft Inc. and Instagram at Final Draft Screenwriting. This episode was produced by Kayla Guess with help from associate producer Emma Vranich. Music by T. Kelly. Thanks again, everyone. Until next time, right on. Mm-hmm.